For thousands of years, human atrocity has been a subject of interest. It wasn't understood for what's responsible for all the rage and rush we see in the world. The biologists studied human behaviors for long times to reveal the chemical changes associated with it. Rage that led to a state of mind where the individuals believed they can do and often were capable of doing things that normally seemed physically impossible. It all was mystifying and a point of curiosity until in the late 1895 when a Polish physiologist identified an extract that led to the discovery of a moiety named adrenaline. Adrenaline is a class of catecholamines which help the body respond to stress situations and prepare the body for fight or flight reactions. The adrenal gland make large amounts of catecholamines as a reaction to stress. The main catecholamines are epinephrine, norepinephrine, and dopamine. Now let's just assume for the sake of understanding, there were two brothers naming norepinephrine and epinephrine. They happened to get separated in the childhood somehow. They used to be angry all the time. It's in their instincts. Norepinephrine evolved into a more civilized gentleman while the epinephrine retained his savage background. Let's come to the point now. Their angry behavior shows they are from a sympathomimetic class. I have showed norepinephrine civilized because it continuously releases into circulation at low levels. While epinephrine is savage, meaning it only releases during times of stress. Basically, they both are released from the adrenal gland located at the top of each kidney. The adrenal gland consists of two parts, adrenal cortex and adrenal medulla. The adrenal medulla makes chemicals such as epinephrine and norepinephrine, which are involved in sending nerve signals. On the arrival of a stressful stimulus, the hypothalamus, which is primarily responsible for dealing with the sympathetic and parasympathetic activity regulation, sends down the presynaptic potentials into spinal cord. In spinal cord, from thoracolumbar region T1 to L2 is responsible for the sympathetic activity. Now, the cell bodies of preganglionic motor neurons send signals to adrenal medulla. In adrenal medulla, there are chromaffin cells, which are cell bodies of postganglionic motor neurons. The purple fiber you are seeing here comes from thoracolumbar region and it's called cholinergic fiber because it releases acetylcholine which is attached to the receptor site on chromaffin cells. In these chromaffin cells, the tyrosine is converted into norepinephrine, which again serves as a precursor for epinephrine. For understanding the mechanism of conversion, we will focus on the basics. In liver, phenylalanine, which is an amino acid, converts to tyrosine in presence of enzyme phenylalanine hydroxylase. Now, this tyrosine serves for two purposes. We will come to it in few seconds. Basically, adrenaline and noradrenaline serves as both neurotransmitter and also serve as hormone. While serving as neurotransmitter, the tyrosine is converted into norepinephrine in the adrenergic neuronal cytoplasm. And serving as a hormone, this tyrosine is converted into norepinephrine in chromaffin cells, which I already told present in the adrenal gland. Let's take a deeper look at the neurotransmission process in an adrenergic neuron. Adrenergic neurotransmission consists of five major stages. The sodium-dependent tyrosine transporter transports the amino acid tyrosine into the neuron first. Then, once within the neuron, tyrosine is hydroxylated by the enzyme tyrosine hydroxylase to L-DOPA. The enzyme aromatic amino acid decarboxylase converts dihydroxyphenylalanine 
often known as L-dopa or levodopa to dopamine. The second phase involves the transfer of dopamine into synaptic vesicle, where the enzyme dopamine dehydroxylase transforms dopamine to norepinephrine. The action is then delivered into third step. In third step, the calcium channel gets open and calcium concentration increases. The increase in calcium causes the synaptic vesicle to fuse with the membrane and release its contents into the synapse. In the fourth step, norepinephrine binds to the postsynaptic receptor on a factor organ, which triggers intracellular response. Norepinephrine also binds to presynaptic receptor, which results in decrease in norepinephrine release through negative feedback mechanism. In the fifth and final step, norepinephrine is removed from the synaptic space by diffusing out into the systemic circulation as well as being inactivated by the enzyme catechol o methyltransferase or COMT for short. Most importantly, norepinephrine is transported back into the neuron by sodium chloride dependent norepinephrine transporter or NET for short. Once within the neuron, norepinephrine may either be transported back into the synaptic vesicle for future usage which implies it is recycled or it can be broken down and metabolized by the enzyme monoamine oxidase, which is short for MAO. Now, coming back to adrenal gland activity, noradrenaline is converted into adrenaline by enzyme N-methyltransferase. This process happens in adrenal medulla. These hormones and neurotransmitters when released trigger responses on receptors. Stick around as we will discuss about receptors that act on catecholamines and the response that they generate due to it. Receptors are chemical structures composed of protein that receive and transduce signals that may be integrated into biological systems. Norepinephrine acts mostly on alpha receptors although it does stimulate beta receptors to a certain degree. Now let us discuss these receptors a bit. Adrenaline and noradrenaline both collectively act on alpha-1, alpha-2, beta-1 and beta-2 receptor. Now considering these receptors as doors, where alpha-1 is a door that opens on vascular smooth muscles, visceral smooth muscles, radial smooth muscles of iris and CNS neurons. Alpha-2 in some presynaptic terminals, pancreatic islets, platelets, ciliary epithelium, smooth muscles, and CNS neurons. Beta-1 opens the door of myocardium, JG cells, some presynaptic terminals, and CNS neurons. Beta-2 on lungs, liver, myocardium, smooth muscles, skeletal muscles, some presynaptic terminals, and CNS neurons. A pro tip to remember this is alpha-1 arteries, alpha-2 presynaptic neurons, beta-1 heart, beta-2 lungs. Now you must be wondering why have I made them as doors? Well, let's go back to our example of two brothers now. Norepinephrine is a brother that can open only three doors showing following effects. Alpha-1 vasoconstriction, alpha-2 platelet aggregation, beta-1 increased heart rate and contractility. Epinephrine is a brother that can open all the four doors leading to these results. Alpha-1 vasoconstriction, alpha-2 platelet aggregation, beta-1 increased heart rate and contractility, beta-2 bronchodilation. However, both the brothers love each other and live in harmony and peace. Both of them simultaneously benefit each other. So here goes the general understanding of catecholamines. This is just a brief overview. Let us know if you need more of these videos in details and for more join scardia.com.